I did not like The Last of Us very much. The Last of Us is a really nice story that's got some fantastic acting in the context of what video games are typically capable of. As a game, I didn't really like it. I just found it kind of boring, to be honest. The ladders and... I don't know. But I know that everyone else loves it. I just personally did not like it, even though I enjoyed the story. Two years later. If we can accept that video games shouldn't always be defined by their playability alone, and that story is just as important, then the argument that The Last of Us is among the greatest games ever released holds a lot of water. Everything I don't like is literally Hitler, literally Hitler, literally Hitler. Everything I don't like is literally Hitler. Let's have a look and see. Comic books, Hitler. Comedians, Hitler. Capitalism, Hitler. Socialism, Hitler. Criticism, Hitler. Men's rights activism, Hitler. Sexual dimorphism, Hitler. Facts, Hitler. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quartering end. That's right. Skill up is canceled. If you didn't like The Last of Us 2, then you are pandering. You are an evil alt writer. You are the absolute worst. And I find it pretty hilarious that this has been the response to a game that is universally loved. The game has a 96% meta score with like nearly 50 perfect scores. By the way, 86 positive, three mixed, zero negative. Zero negative reviews for the game. This is an absolute win. One, look at all these 100 out of 100. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Nearly 50 hacks. That's right. There's no such thing as a perfect video game. 100% should not be anything that's ever achieved. Uh, 99%, I'm going to throw you in honorary 50 hacks. But... That isn't to say a game can't be in 92, 93, 94, 95. Sure. But if you're going to tell me that a game is a 100%, I don't believe you. There's absolutely plenty to criticize about this game, and that's exactly what YouTuber Skill Up did. Receiving 1.3 million views on his The Last of Us Part 2 review, which is definitely worth a watch if you're interested. Um, you know, the guy... Behind Skill Up and I don't uh, care for each other, IRL, but for me at least, that doesn't affect whether or not I can enjoy their content. Uh, and I think his review is very good. In fact, any of his reviews are usually pretty good. This review has 69,000 giggity upvotes, 10,000 downvotes. So that's a strong downvote thing. And many of the things he talked about, he basically just confirmed the least by saying, We won't like the game because of the second half. Um, people who like the Star Wars trilogy, the new Star Wars trilogy, will like this. Oof. As Kylo Ren said, let the past die. Golf club it if you have to. Uh, I mean, essentially, that's what he says. He compares the game to The Last Jedi and says, look, if you're one of the people that really enjoyed The Last Jedi, you'll probably like this. But I didn't. And he didn't just stop there. He didn't just say, hey, I don't like this game. He gave many very well thought out reasons why. Here's just six of them. Character choices, plot holes were so bad throughout the game, sometimes he would laugh out loud. The game is 25 hours long, and one section feels like a 10-hour side quest. He says he would have not finished it had it not been a review copy. There are improvements to the graphics, combat, and exploration, but enemy AI is still poor. The story is relentlessly bleak. There are no likable characters and no comic relief, and everything you liked about the characters in the first game is gone. There are very few interesting scripted cinematic scenes, and the game is far too long and boring. On the plus side, it does have the best difficulty settings for fine-tuning and looks gorgeous. Let me ask you, 
does any of this does any of this sound political to you he also makes comparisons to saying ellie is kind of like daenerys targaryen in the final season of game of thrones and that's a deeply unflattering comparison as he meant it to be it's an absolute masterpiece of a review and ultimately um, you know, some some reviewers didn't like the game, but are still glad they played it. I mean, there are a lot of people that I think felt pressure to review the game very highly. That isn't to say the game's a 20 and people are giving it a 100. I'm sure the game is probably, if you remove the story, it's probably still an 80 or 90 uh, standard game. Um, and the story, which will appeal to some and not to others. So it's going to really depend where you land on the story but because he gave it a negative review here's what we get this is somebody with thousands of followers who already has me blocked so that's a a good uh good good uh indicator i want to talk a little bit about monetized youtube outrage a reviewer named skill up gave the last gave the last of us part two a negative review this review has been pointed to by certain shall we say right-wing personalities as the only fair one that wasn't bought by Sony. Oh, I'm blocked. Good thing I archived it. They continue. Interestingly, the day before his review was published, he put up a video titled, Here's what I thought, think about The Last of Us, not the sequel. It was glowing ending with this line. If we can accept that a video game shouldn't always be defined by their playability alone and that the story is just as important, then his argument that The Last of Us is among the greatest games ever released holds a lot of water. Hey, that's fair. Like the first one. Didn't like the second one. But what's interesting is, if you go back and look at God of War 2018 review skill up, he says this. I don't like The Last of Us very much. As a game, I really, I didn't really like it. I found it boring to be honest, ladders, etc. I know that everyone else loves it. I just personally didn't like it. Well, that is an interesting contradiction. However, he said, if we can accept that video games can't always be defined by their playability alone. So this person uses this quote kind of out of context to prove hypocrisy here, but he's saying, if we can accept that the video game shouldn't always be defined by their playability alone, and that story is just as important, so to him, playability probably mattered. And he also talked literally about boring ladders and things like that, which would be part of playability. He goes on to say, so it's of interest to me that he has somehow shifted course on the first game on the day before posting what he knew would be a negative review of the sequel. Well, I think you might be giving uh, uh, a little bit too much credit I think it's entirely reasonable to ride the wave of The Last of Us traffic the week that you're going to release the review. Why wouldn't you make two videos out of it instead of just one? This is coming from a guy that puts out sometimes seven videos in a day. You cover what's interesting, you cover what's trending, and you make hay while the sun shines. This is just how actual YouTubing works. Now, they go on and they say, I'd suggest... The reason he did this is it feeds the narrative of SJW Druckmann ruined the sequel with his liberal pandering. Ha! This is clearly someone that has never followed Skill Up on Twitter. The guy is as liberal as they come. He parrots most of the uh, the generally uh, boring NPC video game employee takes of everyone else. He, he simps for the video game industry employees. He is definitely left wing uh which is totally fine i don't watch his videos for his political takes i don't watch angry joe's videos for his political takes i don't watch jim sterling's videos for his political takes all three of these people to me are annoyingly left-leaning but none of that matters because it doesn't affect in most in any case that i've seen really their honest uh, review of a particular title. So to say that someone uh, like SkillUp, all right, uh, who is clearly left leaning on Twitter, would then pander to anti SJW people is ludicrous. 
It's ludicrous. I don't believe that for a single second. And that suggests the reason it is narrative SJW Druckmann in the sequel. He's playing to an angry audience who could use his newfound appreciation of The Last of Us as a shield to say The Last of Us Part 2 is trash. And he's making money off those furious, righteous clicks doing it. And it's always a thing with these people, right? I'm making money. Uh, this, there, Therefore, because you're making money, therefore that invalidates your opinion. Well, what about those same reviews that you're using to validate your point? You're saying, well, IGN gave it 100. Okay, aren't they making money by reviewing it? Aren't they making money by having uh, early access to the game? And you see the meme of Oh, all right, get lost all your paid reviews. Go on Scram. Get out of your paid reviews. Except, except you say you stay. And that's the bas bad one. Upset. Well, you know why it seems uh, bad? Or it seems like maybe he's honest? It's because Skillup doesn't have a history of being bought and paid for, like many in the access journalism space. I guarantee you there are things that he did want to say about this game that his... Uh, that he couldn't say, which is disappointing. But if he did say, he never would have got a review copy. I also firmly believe he got a review copy because of his political leanings. And absolutely, I doubt he would disagree with me. If he was, let's say, openly right wing, do you think Naughty Dog and, and Neil Druckmann would have given him a review copy? Of course they wouldn't have. There are many reasons why Naughty Dog cherry-picked who they would give the game to, and I absolutely 100% believe that their political leanings absolutely lead into that. If you look at even Forbes, which in most of those writers, uh, even the ones that I follow and the ones that do good work, are openly left-leaning. For whatever reason, they didn't get a copy, so I'm not sure why they didn't get a copy. Forbes is a pretty big outlet, so they were clearly cherry-picking, but politics wasn't the only thing. Uh, and you see, so do you believe The Last of Us Part Two deserves a perfect score? Is it flawless in every way? Don't know. I haven't played it. I don't care that he didn't like it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're attacking him simply for pointing out some flaws in the game. I care that he pulled a 180 on the first game to push a narrative that's most financially beneficial to him. Again, this is verifiably false. Let me explain things to you, viewer Anon, the way the world works in the video game industry. It's not profitable to make fun of the video game companies. It's not profitable to go against the grain politically. If anything, he's going with the grain openly for money reasons. And the fact that he gave this game such a negative review, we know that Naughty Dog is picky with who, get re who gets reviews and Sony. So it's likely that he may have hurt his long-term availability, his long-term ability to release reviews early. Make no mistake about it, there's a reason it has over a million views, and that's because, first of all, it stands out as more well-researched. Second of all, it's because you got to release it a week before the game comes out. That's access journalism. And if you go against the mainstream, you get kicked out. This was not a good, quote-unquote, business move for SkillUp. This was him being honest and straightforward. Also remember that the first game came out many years ago, and sometimes people, they might actually change. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.